Welcome everyone, this is Edward Earl for the Business Development Series. I want to bring up a worksheet that I think is radically critical when it comes to developing content for you guys, okay? And this is for any organization. It doesn't matter what kind of business you are, obviously. This is all about the strategic creation of content. And I built this quite some time ago when I was asked by a doctor, a fairly sizable uh, wealthy doctor who would put together a product and he was trying some direct response type marketing and I explained to him how that wouldn't work and one of the reasons why was the fact that he was marketing to doctors and I said doctors don't respond to the marketing that stuff goes into the circular bin they send it to their secretary and it started this whole discussion about what do we do in the marketing, what type of marketing do you go for and what kind of content do we offer people as the next logical step? So I put this program together and began to teach it as an integral component and then it turned into an actual book called The Five Questions that you should ask before you write any advertisement. So I want to go over it because I need you to understand this stuff so that way you know what you're doing instead of just putting content on social media or stuff SEO or whether you're printing flyers or postcards or however you're marketing. I need you to walk through these five questions with me so you understand. Okay, so I'm going to go through these. The first thing that you ask yourself is sit down, and you can, if you want to download this uh, off the website, I'll put the, the worksheet up there, and you can pull it and use it yourself. But this is the first thing you're going to ask yourself. Number one, what is happening when a prospect first starts thinking about what you sell? All right, describe the details. If you are a realtor and you're after home listings okay what is happening when someone first starts thinking about selling their house or looking to buy a house or looking to buy a car or whatever the circumstances that you sell it does not matter what industry you're in what is happening when the prospect first starts thinking about what you sell describe the details what's really going on why is the person moving what are the problems or the situations or the solutions that they've gone over or looked over in their mind? How do those things rank on what I call the stress evaluation? S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, right? There's, there's a format for that where I allow you to break each circumstance down and give it a ranking so you understand how, what kind of emotional intensity is going on with this decision. So that way you're marking, you're advertising, your words, the colors that you use, everything that has to do with your brand, your nonverbal communications, your verbal communications, that those things all match. I put this together in a system so it's easy for you to assemble the creativity that makes people buy and makes them respond. So describe those details. Number two, what does the prospect do first? All right, where does the prospect go first? Looking for information, solutions, companies, describe those details. Okay, my wife just did a big thing on ABC4 uh, News about self-defense for women. And, and we started going through that and we said, where do people go? If women feel like they're being threatened or their environment is a little more threatening, whether they've had an experience or they're just getting to that point where they're seeing the news happen around them, where do they go first? Well, the first thing they start doing is they start Googling some things. They think about people, places where their kids might have taken martial arts or another parent whose kids takes martial arts, or they just start asking friends. That's not always the case. Some people Google, some people look at magazines, some people go buy magazines, some people go buy, you know, whatever it is that they buy. Some, everybody has a specific type of activity, whether that's an ask activity or an act activity, which we'll get into those details of what that means later, okay? But what does the prospect start to do? Describe those details, all right? Number three, what is the next logical step? After the prospect would read, hear, or see any type of advertisement or piece of information or collateral, what is it that they do next logically? Number one, or A, do they ask for more information because they feel skeptical or they feel at risk or they're actually not ready to buy now, they're just investigating? B, they want to talk to a salesperson. Hey, they've got some pretty good information but they need some final detail questions and they're ready to buy now or soon the setup of the communication lends itself meaning the collateral the ad lends itself towards people saying I, I need to go talk to somebody about this essentially right now alright do they see walk into the store 
or a location. Hey, they're ready to buy now or soon. They just need to touch and feel. They need that tangible validation that it is what they think it is and it does what they think it does. Or maybe they just want to start looking around, which is interesting because if I were to have more time, I could break down so many industries and explain. For example, when people start looking for custom leather furniture, when I began to market custom leather furniture companies in some of the largest franchises in the country, I told people when we went through this process, they were marketing completely wrong. And I said, you know what people do? When they get to the point where they want to buy custom leather furniture, they literally just go to the mall area or those retail store areas where they've seen a custom leather furniture store and they just go drive around and walk in from place to place to place. Kind of how like people used to do when they would buy cars. They just go go to the car lots and start walking around. Okay, I'm not saying that's you. I'm just saying they didn't even understand that. So they didn't recognize how to create collateral and advertising in connection with what was going on at their store in order to get people to give them what they wanted to make the decision. We fixed all that, hence significant growth. Or D is the next logical step that they're ready to buy now. If I've seen something, right, in an infomercial or infomercial-esque type platform, whether that's 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or, you know, 30 minutes, have I gotten to a point where, they, where the prospect has all of the information they need or that maybe is available and they're ready to buy now or soon? Sometimes people say to themselves after seeing advertising, you know what, I love that thing, I want to buy it, but repetition will build credibility, okay, as do frequent ad changes, or they're not ready because they're not in a position right now to break out a credit card, uh, make the purchase, so they wait, and then they forget about it, and then they see it again, and then you just, through rep repetition, it keeps reminding them until they get to a point where it's convenient for them to actually make the purchase, okay, promote and pay. Basically, what I call promote and pay, the only method of communication is through the advertising. So the next step for them is to actually buy it. All right. Four, here's something that's critical. What does the prospect need to see or hear in order to feel like he or she has the ability to make the best decision? This is so radically important. What type of marketing evidence or validation do they need? In this case, in the beginning, I talked about the doctor. What did he need? he needed to see the white paper. And the, the white paper was a couple hundred pages long. And the guy said, I can't send that to the doctors. I said, sure you can. I said, doctors are used to reading reports. It's what they do all day long. They read information. A 200 page white paper on all of your background and evidence of the product does not scare them. It's what they want. So we began to market to them and tell them that this was available, the actual white paper, it showed that we were exposing the back end of what we were doing, being completely, completely transparent. And then it gave them something that they actually liked, right? That's what they needed to see or hear, all right? That's what they needed to see or hear. They wanted that. But it also, that approach with the doctors coincides with question five, which we're not there yet. The next thing in, what do they need to hear or see? What's the buying cycle? Repetition. How many numbers of times do they have to see the information, okay? How long is that buying cycle? Is this something that lasts 30 days? Is something that lasts 30 seconds? If you buy a stick of gum, that might be 30 seconds if you're sitting at the checkout. Okay, some things last, last one year. And if guys don't understand it, their whole marketing structure is not set up to last that buying cycle. Then the last question is, what format or medium is the prospect used to? What type of information is the prospect habitually used to working with? These are your sales tools, i.e., right here, doctors are used to white papers and will read an enormous amount of information, but will not glance at marketing or advertising materials. CFOs are used to financial reports. If I had the time, and then when you're at the seminar, I'll give you some examples, and actually the live examples of this actual collateral that made money for these companies, I'll show you, and then, of course, we'll create this stuff for you while you're there, okay? I'm telling you, when you do that, all of a sudden, you're not asking someone to do something they're not used to. You need to create their marketing in the form of things that people are used to reading. That's one of the reasons why we were able to market very, very big copier companies and grow them a 1,000% within the course of 10 months because the people writing the check were the CFOs. And so what we did is we gave them, we sent them big packets of breakdown information that showed that their equipment, their electronic equipment, their copy equipment, their 
their big copy machines, everything else, that they were losing money in these evergreen clauses. And they didn't understand it. So we ran the entire report. Instead of trying to send a sales guy to sucker them into doing a consultation, we just ran the cons we just ran the information ourselves, took the big 25-page report and sent it to them. And that made all the difference in the world. The guys were the reps were actually getting called into there to close the deal. They no longer had to chase these guys around because we gave the CFOs the form of marketing they were used to, which is a financial report. It's just people don't think that these types of things, financial report, white papers, are marketing, but they are to the types of people that we were addressing, okay? So you have to understand this stuff critically. If you're not going to go through this stuff, then your marketing is going to suck. There's just no other way around it. And if that's what you're about, then the reality is you don't need to be at this kind of stuff. I'm going to teach you how to create seriously focused and legitimate marketing collateral, advertising sales approaches that make people respond and make people close deals with you, bigger percentages, bigger deals, and create significantly more leads and more opportunities. But you have to start here, all right? You have to start right here. So anyway, thanks a million, and we're going to create some more content videos, but this will give you a better understanding of what you should be doing. Download the worksheet and walk through this the best that you can. Come to the seminar series, and we'll refine this with you and then create these strategies for you. Thanks a billion. We'll talk to you soon.